Hello, my name is Philip Pendleton and I'm the composer for Monitor the Game, the Steam Edition. In this audio commentary, I'll be highlighting some of the music from the game and talking about my creative process, and hopefully giving you some insight into what's involved in creating a video game score. So the first piece I want to discuss is a track called Electrical Interference. Now this track is the theme for day one, and is particularly monumental as it was the first piece I wrote and got approved by Dave and really helped to define the sound of Monitor early on in the game's development. Electrical Interference is also where we hear the Monitor motif for the first time. These three notes make up a single musical idea, or building block, on which I built the entire score. In its original form, it's played primarily on the piano, but throughout the score you'll hear the motif used in various forms. This track also features vocals provided by Olivia Steele, who played Lana, one of the main characters in the game. I sent her the vocal parts, played on piano, and she recorded each part four times. Two vocal takes are panned left, two are panned right, and her performance really lifts the track, and I'd definitely like to work with Olivia again. Excuse the uh, thunder. We also have a special guest on this commentary. Olivia Steele is going to join us and talk about the two tracks that she contributed vocals for. Over to you, Olivia. Hello, my name is Olivia Steele and I play Lana in Monitor. I also contributed vocals onto the cues for the soundtrack. Now, I did uh, some of the background vocals onto the tracks, um, Electrical Interference and Protect Those You Care About. I believe is the name for the second one. It wasn't a very long process for doing those particular vocals. Um, the longest one that took to complete would have been electrical interference. Um, protecting those you care about, really, I just was sent the sample by Philip, who's an awesome composer, by the way. And um, 
just kind of told me to just find some good spots to throw in those words because that's my vocal cues saying protecting those you care about in the track and he was going for sound I can't remember now what the name of the band was that he sent me but it was a really really cool track where they did kind of this modularized vocalization where it was really just talking but it was modified to sound very computer-like and it was really awesome and so I was just sent the sample and I listened and I just tried to find um, a couple different spots to put it and sent it to him and he did his magic and I think it turned out pretty awesome. I was actually really stoked when I heard the final product. Um, the other one, Electrical Interference, that was the first one we did and not gonna lie, I was really scared when I did that. Um, I'm not the world's greatest singer, but I'm okay <laughs> and this was the first time I'd actually been able to work on a track for uh, any of my projects. And so, you know, the pressure was there, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. And uh, I learned quite a bit actually working on that track because um, I often do small little songs on my own. I post them to my YouTube channel, shameless plug. Um, but I do it kind of on my own. I've learned myself um and I've never really talked to anyone about the technicality of putting vocal tracks together for songs and Philip taught me to do something really awesome which is it's probably a no-brainer to people who've worked with audio before but to record multiple tracks and basically layer and pan them so you'll have one track all the way over to 100% panned left, another 100% right, and then two others, same at 50%, and then one in the middle. And that's pretty much how the vocals for Electrical Interference was done. Um, just stacked vocals and humming. And there wasn't... He, he didn't tell me exactly what to do, so I kind of had to improv some of it and... That was intriguing, trying to break down how to vocalize the song. And as someone who's not mainly a singer, um, that was quite challenging. And I really enjoyed it. It was it was so much fun. Um, we had originally intended to do a full uh, ending credit song at one point. Um, but due to, bleh, sorry, due to time constraints, um, we ended up not doing that. But hopefully one day. You never know. Things might happen. And, uh, but that's, that's all I really have to say. So thank you guys for listening. And I'll send you back off to Philip. Protecting Those You Care About introduces day two. It definitely has a Stranger Themes vibe. And again, features vocals by Olivia Steele. And for this track, I processed her vocals using a vocoder. Um, there's been lots of bands throughout the years that have used a vocoder but I was particularly um, channeling craft work I think for this track X directory number is phone guys theme and is underscore for when the player answers the telephone and receives instructions from a mysterious voice at the other end. Now, Phone Guy is brilliantly played by Mark, otherwise known as Joy of Sticks, on YouTube, and this is one of my favourite themes in the game. Once again, this track features a variation on the main monitor motif, supported by strings this time. Now, X directory number is also noteworthy, because it features sound design from the film The Dark Knight, and in particular the breathing sound. Zebra 2 HD Edition by Yuhi Plugins was a collaboration between Hans Zimmer and Howard Scar. Um, I think practically all the Zebra sounds in The Dark Knight as well as The Dark Knight Rises soundtracks are included. And if you're a musician, I highly recommend this synth.
Denouement was originally called All and Sundry, and is one of the ten possible endings in the game. This track really became the monitor suite, as it includes several ideas that made it into other cues. So go grab a cup of tea, as this is by far the longest track in the game, clocking in at nine and a half minutes. Enjoy!
Finally, I thought I'd highlight two tracks that are part of the Monitor soundtrack, but aren't actually in the game itself. Bonus tracks, if you will. These two trailers were used to promote the game in the run-up to its release. So I present the trailer, which was actually the second trailer to be released, and the show trailer, which was played at a games event, open to the public and hosted by Dave's University. The show trailer is of note as I tried to follow the formula that movie trailers use, Intro, build up, climax one, climax two, in case you were wondering. Uh, almost all movie trailers follow this pattern, so I tried to give Monitor a more cinematic feel for the final trailer. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Thank you for listening to my audio commentary. The Monitor soundtrack is available on iTunes, Amazon, and Spotify. So until next time, goodbye.